Good afternoon, everyone. How the fuck are you guys doing? I'm doing pretty goddamn good. And look at me, all making a video and shit. It's been a month. I'm sorry about that. Uh, uninspired, what can I say? But this afternoon, I am indeed inspired to make a fucking video. It's a video response, like I normally do, only this time to Together for Peace, Jack. Good old Jack. Old school YouTube Jack. What up? Um... Jack did a video, and I'll link it in the Sarah Han bar below. It was a reply to a video by uh, Go Green 18 Lacey Green, whatever it is, um, about what she called atheist elitism. Um, I, I didn't watch the entire video that Lacey did, um, but I did watch Jack's. Those are always interesting. And I want to kind of explain a couple things to you, or, or at least attempt to. Atheist elitism. Not really exactly sure what that entails. Um, if it's a sort of bias, um, a sort of anti-theism, a sort of smug declaration that you are indeed an atheist, and simply because you're an atheist, that makes you an all-around critical thinker superior to any theist, period. Right? That, that sort of elitism, that sort of smugness, that attitude, which I have to tell you, I don't really see a lot of. Not completely, right? I, I don't really think that the majority of the atheists here on YouTube, that at least at least the ones I associate with and chat with regularly, I, I don't think they actually believe they are better than you because they're atheists and you're not. I think they believe that they're right and you're not. Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. You know, um, about being an atheist on, on YouTube. I'll put it to you like this. It's easy to be smug and arrogant when you don't really have a very brave position. And atheism, Jack, is not a, a bold or brave or risky position to take. It's very close to not being a position at all. It's almost there, right? Just about no position at all, about as benign as it can get, right? Someone approaches you with a proposition, you reject it, you're not really taking much of a position, you're just a naysayer. You refuse to believe what the other person is telling you. Now, that's not a very risky thing to do if, in fact, you've never encountered in your life, and, and no one else that you know has ever really encountered in their life, any sort of similar situation that the person is describing to you. The theist is describing to you all of these very supernatural things that the faith is based around. And you're stuck in this position where you don't know anyone who's ever experienced anything quite like they're describing to you, and it's the very foundation of their faith. I mean, the resurrection and crucifixion of Christ are basically, you know, the coming of Christ is basically the foundation of the Christian religion. Now, of course, there are, I'm, I'm sure there's many important things, things that you find important anyway, you know, scriptures that matter to you. It's not just about that one event, that, that, or it's not just about the life of Jesus all around, but that's a big deal. That's pretty much a, a huge part of what you believe, and I can't believe it. I can't because I've never encountered anything quite like what Christians describe when they describe that scenario, when they tell me that story. And I may come across smug. It's funny to me, and I am a little biased. I'm biased to reality. I'm biased on behalf of what I have come to understand. That's all. And I don't think that's unreasonable. I don't think it's closed-minded. Then just bear in mind that it's easy to come across arrogant and confident when you take such a non-risky position, or non-position for that matter. When you're simply saying to the person offering you this proposition, why should I believe you? Why should I believe you? And you go on in your video to talk about how people like Lacey simplify, intentionally oversimplify their opposition, all right? They oversimplify what, 
religious people believe. And it's not really an intentional thing, Jack, to be honest. I, I, I'll admit that sometimes it may come off that way because when I watch my own videos on YouTube of the past and, and I watch other atheists on YouTube, I get it. I get how a theist could be watching this and think to himself, look at this arrogant prick. I mean, he's asking as if he, he really doesn't want any answers, but he's being sarcastic and smug, and he's acting like it's, it's a big joke to him, but it's not a joke to me. I, I, can put that self, I can put myself in that position. But the problem is, is that it's not that we want to oversimplify your religion. It's that there's a very simple element to it that we're unable to get past due to that whole critical thought thing. You know, critical thought is not just about questioning your own beliefs. It does take a certain amount of bravery. You know, however, you know, you have to have a sort of brave position. The braver your position, the bolder your position, the more bravery it requires to look it in the eye and challenge it. But atheism, as I said before, is not a bold position or a brave one, so it doesn't take much. So we're stuck, Jack, at these very basic objections to your big, complicated belief system. And the very basic objections we have are simply logical objections. You claim that your Savior rose from the dead. Now, already... Being a critical thinker, I have a problem with that because I have to think, has anyone ever witnessed anyone rise from the dead miraculously after several days? I, I, has anyone ever seen a, a human being actually tread across the water? Has anyone ever actually seen any of these miracles performed, bringing someone back to life, restoring a blind man's vision? Has anyone? And these are all very basic objections, but they're important. Because these, these are the, some of the like foundations, some of the cornerstones of your faith. And it may come across smug, or a, as if we're trying to oversimplify your entire religion. It's not that. It's that our position is simple. We can't believe what you're saying, and we wonder why you do. Now, as I said before, critical thought doesn't stop, Jack, at questioning your own belief. It's about what you do with the answers you get when you question your belief. That's what matters. Critical thought, just because you go, well, um, do I really believe this? Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, I might want to rethink this. And then you just end up where you were when you started without any good reason for that. Or at least without properly explaining yourself. You still end up where you started you must not be that critical of a thinker. That's all. That's, that, that's really all there is to it. It's about what you do with the answers. And, and you talk about you're more interested in, in the way a discussion takes place. You know, that, that's your number one concern. How do atheists and theists, no matter who they are, communicate with one another? Are they, are, are they respectful and sympathetic to the other position? Do they actually try to understand the depths of the position? A lot of times, no. A lot of times, no, because our objections are simple, very, very simple, and remain undefeated, completely undefeated. Your position, Jack, is a bold one. Your position, Jack, is a brave position, a position almost impossible to defend. So it's very hard to be arrogant in your shoes, and it's very easy to be arrogant in mine for that reason. And again, really all I want to say to you is that it's not about how a conversation goes between two people. It's not about how the people feel you know, about how the other person spoke to them or, or how well they communicated. It's about what they do with the information they received during the conversation. Critical thinking doesn't just stop because you question things and then ignore the answers. 
that's not how it works. So there you have it. That's my little rant for the afternoon. You guys have a good one. Peace.